Joining us now, Sharon Block, a former member of the National Labor Relations Board. She's now uh, with Harvard Law School. And Neil Bradley, Executive Vice President and Chief Policy Officer uh, with the U.S. Chamber of Commerce. The Chamber co-wrote a letter with 160 groups urging the Biden administration to provide support to avoid a strike. Uh, the White House is, in fact, sending a team uh, to Detroit today. And uh, can I call you Professor now, Sharon? Can I? I'll come to call you Sharon. Is Sharon okay? Well, well you please can call, call me Joe. Please call me Sharon. Just, just call me to dinner, okay? Um, <laughs> I don't like to 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 take any um, I, I don't know amusement or satisfaction out of this, but just it's it's so fascinating to me how the Biden administration and how you would recommend the Biden administration to approach this, Sharon. And and we had Harry Wilson on last week. He was part of the task force back during the, the, the crisis. And he mm -hmm. said that the UAW has a point. They shared a lot of the sacrifice uh, after that and have not really participated uh, in, in the upside that, that was seen. So he can understand even a number like 40%. But you point out about the booming profits. And my question is, you know, past performance is no guarantee of the future. Do you think the outlook is bright? for the big three for booming profits that continue from, from here on? Well, I certainly think that the outlook will be brighter if the companies treat their workers in a way that's fair. And there are a lot of uh, variables that will determine the future of the auto sector. You know, let's remember that labor costs are actually a very small part of these companies' costs. So to position what's going to happen at this bargaining table as determinative of the the future success of these companies is not exactly accurate but the companies have over these past years since the since 2007 when as you as you recounted the union did make great concessions to save this industry the companies have increased CEO pay at a very rapid rate. They have given out billions of dollars in stock buybacks. So to now say, oh, we have to be so careful about the future and ask workers again to be the ones to absorb right. risk about the future, they'll, they'll be most successful if they come to the table in good faith and negotiate but, a But a, a, a hobbled employer... It doesn't help anyone. We know Ford lost $4 billion in, in trying to do the EV transition. We know that the Biden administration is on the cover of the New York Times today. The emission standards are, are going to be, by, in the next 10 years, almost prohibitively expensive for, for a lot of different industries. It just it seems at this point they are facing a very daunting future, the UAW. And it doesn't help anyone if, if the... The, the automakers end up like they did several times in the recent past. And that, that's what you, you know, I, I've heard the 7 or 8% of labor issues, but I hear it actually can be quite a bit uh, more. You know, if, if, do, you, do you think 7 or 8% is all that labor costs, the UA, or the, uh, the big three? Well, no, and it's going to be a lot worse if you look at these UAW demands. I mean, it would be one thing if the focus were talking about how we share in the future growth and profit of the automakers. But listen, the UAW is looking for a 40 percent pay raise. They want workers to be paid for five days when they only work for four. They want to return to defined benefit pension systems. That is a recipe to put these companies into bankruptcy, and that serves no one interest. I think the question we have to ask is, why do they feel so emboldened? This actually isn't the first time we've seen demands like this. It's been the summer of strikes, and this is a bit of a pattern. And unfortunately, I think it's being fueled in part by the Biden administration and this push for unionization at all costs. And we saw a little bit of that in the president's remarks on Friday. So we're deeply concerned. We have to restore balance. Workers deserve a pay raise, but not the type of things that the UAW is demanding that's only going to result in these companies going out of business. Sharon, if, if this were to, to actually make it more difficult for the U.S. economy in an election year. Do you think that is in the back of the mind <clears throat> of negotiators or, that are being sent by the Biden administration? This doesn't help anyone, and it doesn't help the president in terms of his re-election efforts. Okay, so to be clear first, uh, the president is not sending negotiators. 
Uh, there are no members of the administration that are going to be sitting at the table. Sitting at the table are the company and the union. And I just want to say to question um, the, the loyalty of the UAW and their members to the future success of these companies, there's just no basis for that. I mean, again, let's go back to 2007. This is a union and these are members who sacrificed a great deal to save the auto industry in this country. Now, in terms of the sort of political ramifications, I think the best thing for the president's uh, politics is what's best for the U.S. economy, which is to have a thriving middle class. That's at the heart of Biden Bidenomics. That's what the UAW has been at the heart of for 100 years of building good middle class jobs in this country in manufacturing. So I think getting a fair contract is the best thing, both for our economy and for the president's politics. Neil? Well, listen, you have the UAW over the course of the weekend saying 20 percent pay increases are simply paltry. I think, Joe, you said it best. You know, the past indication of the last decade isn't a guarantee of future performance. Uh, I would be a lot more reassured about the UAW leadership if we were talking about how we expand the footprint of these companies and how workers then share in that. You know, these companies have actually been sharing quite a bit of record profits with their employees through profit sharing programs. But you see, that's not the focus of what the UAW wants. And so I think uh, we're right to be concerned. And what we're focused on at the U.S. Chamber is the ramifications of this through the broader economy. We've already seen additional layoffs as a result of these strikes, and that's just in the auto industry. But think about all the service employees, the restaurants in Detroit and around these plants who are counting on these workers being in their jobs. Their collateral damage in all of this, not to mention the fact that the American consumer is going to end up being paying for these huge wage increases and huge benefit increases.